In this video, we'll talk about compound meter and a few examples of it, 6, 8, 9, 8, 12, 8, and how to properly bean 8th notes and 16th notes and place rests in compound meter. 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, some of the simple meters we have talked about previously and which are very common are considered simple meters because their beats, quarter notes, can be subdivided each into two halves, eighth notes. Some simple meters do not use the quarter note as the beat, like 2-2 two, two, or cut time or the half note equals the beat, and there are countless other examples, but the idea is the same. In simple meter, the beat is subdivided into two halves. Compound meters, on the other hand, subdivide the beat into three parts, three thirds, rather than two. Then, for example, here, if we have three eighth notes per beat instead of only two, the beat is no longer the quarter note, rather, it's a dotted quarter note. In these two examples, we're using the same amount of eighth notes to indicate the subdivision of the beat, but in simple meter, these six eighth notes are divided or grouped into twos. So, as a consequence, we have three beats here. In compound meter, these six eighth notes are grouped into threes. So in consequence, we only have two beats here. The idea that we have a dotted quarter note, or in more general terms, a dotted rhythm as the beat in compound meter, this idea holds true for all compound meters. The beat is always a dotted rhythmic unit. Here's an example. We've heard this melody a few times um, already. This is the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or the ABC song or, or the Baba Sheep melody. And each time I've tried to bring out something different, right, That according to what we have been discussing. So now I want you to pay attention to the first playthrough, which will be in simple duple meter, 2-4, which is what you would expect, how it is generally done. Notice the grand staff, right? So an indication I'm going to be playing this on the piano. We have treble clef, bass clef, all of the different rhythmic units happening here. And after I play it once in simple duple meter, I'll play it in compound duple meter. And the important thing here is to notice what the difference is. And now in compound duple meter. think. Um, to me personally simple meter feels square or more rigid and compound meter is a lot more fluid or, or lilting if you will. Um, I've tried to stress here, I know it is a bit harder to see than the example in 2-4, but I've tried to stress this idea that these beats, the dotted quarter notes, are subdivided into groups of threes, right? Three eighth notes for each beat. That's what the left hand is always, mostly always uh, playing here. Like in simple meter, then, there are, there are duple, triple, and quadruple compound meters. But the numbers in their time signature mean something slightly different than it would in simple meter. There, we learned that the top number was the number of beats, and the bottom number was the rhythmic unit that represented the beat, like 2-4, means two quarter notes per measure. In compound meters, the top number represents the number of rhythmic units that comprise the subdivision of the beat into three parts. Okay, so, and then the bottom number means or represents the rhythmic unit that makes up 
that subdivision of the beat. So here, in other words, we have six eighth notes, but it's not that we have six beats, right? We have six eighth notes, and that's our first um, subdivision of the beat, or rather, the subdivision of the beat into three parts. So if we have six eighth notes, and each beat takes three of them, right? So in consequence, we have then only two beats in six eight. In 9-8, we have 9 eighth notes per bar, right? But we have to group each uh, three of them as a single beat. So you have three taking a beat, the next three is another beat, and the next three is another beat. So in consequence, we have three beats in 9-8. It's compound triple. And in 12-8, you have a compound quadruple. You have 12 eighth notes per bar, but you have four beats, four dotted quarter notes per bar, each one of them a beat. Here's a quick view of six of the sum, uh, some of the most common simple and compound meters and their time signatures. Notice that a measure of six eight is filled with a dotted half note, very much like a measure of three four would. The difference then should have, you know, become uh, clear by now is that in the number of beats, 6, 8 will have two beats, and each of those beats will be subdivided into three eighth notes, and 3, 4 has three beats. Each of those beats will be subdivided into two eighth notes. This difference, for example, between 6, 8, and 3, 4, though they will allow for the same number of rhythmic units and the same type of rhythmic units, um, also affects beaming and rests, as we'll see very shortly. Also notice how a bar of 9-8 is filled with a dotted half note tied to a dotted quarter note, and a measure of 12-8 is filled with a dotted whole note. So I've put here a few comparisons between simple meters, duple, triple, quadruple, and their compound meters counterparts. We'll measure what the individual beats look like and the subdivision of those beats. Beat hierarchy and compound meters is the same as in simple meters. 6-8 being duple features a simple alternation of down beats and up beats. 9-8 being triple meter uh, has a strong down beat and two successively weaker beats. And 12-8 has the same beat hierarchy as 4-4, four, four, strong, weak, medium, or, or semi-strong, and then the weakest being the upbeat. Beaming eighth notes and sixteenth notes in compound meter follows the beat organization. It's the same principle as we have seen before. So instead of beaming eighth notes in groups of twos, like we would in simple meter, here we beam them in groups of threes. However, we do not beam eighth notes across beats, even if we're beaming them in groups of threes. For eighth notes to be beamed together, they must belong to the same beat. So here you have an example, right? If you would only have eighth notes in a six eighth bar, they would be beamed like this. Here you have an incorrect example where I am beaming three eighth notes together but you have a beat that starts here, and you have another beat that starts here. And your beaming is obscuring where the second beat is starting because it's subsuming that beat to an earlier, to this the fraction, you know, the second third of the first beat. So it's just confusing generally. It's always, uh, I guess, a rule of thumb in beaming and also in placing rests that you have to emphasize where the heads of the beats are. So this is incorrect, this is correct. For 16th notes, we do the same thing, but now we beam them in groups of six. And also the same idea, we start our beam on the head of the beat, if possible, um, and we don't cross over beats, right? So here we have a bad example in which we have the second beat here on this first eighth note, being beamed together to what is happening 
previously in the third fraction, in the, in, the, in the last third of the first beat. So this is very confusing, whereas this is very clear. It's showing me where beat one and beat two are. Notice also that we can beam together eighth notes and sixteenth notes like previously, abiding by the same rule of putting things together in the same beat. So these same principles are valid for rests as well. A single beat rest in 6, 8, 9, 8, and 12, 8 is a dotted quarter note rest. Uh, these rests would only occur at the head of the beat, right? Elsewise, we would use quarter and eighth note rests to fill the beats. So here you have an example of a beat that is take two thirds of it is taken by this quarter note, and the last third is silent. So we use a rest here. Here you have the first third, the head of the beat being silent with a rest, and then you have two eighth notes following. Now, you know, if this were three four, you would replace these two eighth note rests with a quarter note rest. Remember that the basic idea of using rests is that you try and use as long as a uh, rest as you can, so longer rests are favored. But in this case, using this um, quarter note rest would obscure the head of the second beat that happens here. So in 6 8, this is correct instead of this. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. In our next video, we'll talk about scales in general and more specifically about what major scales are and how they're formed.